Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, here today with a video that is all about micrometer teaching aids, but I will be using the dividing head that fits on the lathe in order to complete this project. Now, as you recall, many years ago, I had that company when I was in my prime called Peterson Products, and my main product that I started out with was the micrometer teaching aid. A teaching aid large enough for even the boy in the very last row to uh, to be able to see because holding up a regular micrometer of course is way too small for these uh, students uh, to uh, see from in the back of the room. I met up with uh, many people but one of them uh, was Dale Derry and you know him uh, from his great videos and he gave this teaching aid to me and I believe that it was for sale there in the flea market area. It is unfinished but it is a micrometer teaching aid that is an inside micrometer teaching aid basically one of these. Now can you visualize holding this up in front of a class and saying alright boys and girls this sample reading here is so and so they just couldn't see it at all. So the, someone had started to make this and did not finish it. And you can see that it's very similar. Even the little rods come out. And these were sold with a series of rods. I do not have the other rods for this. Even this one has a removable rod which really isn't necessary, but that cap screw holds it in place. All aluminum. A very nice job with some exceptions. Now there were no numbers or graphics at all on this when I got it. And what you see here has been done by me as experimenting with different sizes and so on. And one of the problems with this is that he used, whoever made it, used a uh, half inch 13, that is 13 threads per inch screw, and that made these graduations quite close together. And I cannot change that, so I do just have to deal with that. But I want to put, uh, these are just put on there with magic marker, and I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take this off and do it again. I was going to use tape and other materials that might have been more durable but uh, decided to, to uh, uh, go the easier route so I can make this a quick and easy video I will never use this anyway because of course I'm not teaching in a classroom anymore so taking this apart you can see the screw in there and it's one half thirteen so I am committed to that, but it really needs to be coarser. But the very first thing I need to do on this is to change this angle. This angle here is way too steep, which makes it too short when you compare it with a real micrometer like this, because I would like some of those little graduations there to be longer than others, but this is so short that that just isn't practical. And looking at this, or uh, measuring with a protractor, that's about 115 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is to try to lengthen that taper without really shortening the entire, uh, well this is the, the thimble here. This is the barrel. So the first thing I did was to uh, waste, I mean spend, about $10 on this pinstriping tape. Now I went to AutoZone and when I was looking at the eighth inch tape right there on the rack, I thought, boy, that's just right. So I came home and put some of that on there and it's just way too wide. So then I, I drove 40 miles to... Uh, Hobby Lobby spent 250 on the 1 16th wide which is better and I might use that although it's going to be very hard to apply as you can see here I'm all out of whack on some of those but when I did the original artwork 
almost 50 years ago on these I did use uh, this type of product but that's I'm getting ahead of myself I really want to go over to the lathe now and machine this Boy, that didn't take long because this lined up just so perfectly in that three-jaw chuck. But you can see how I changed the angle. The protractor still sit at the old angle, so it's only about five degrees different. But it made it that much longer. So now it is a total of, oh, about seven sixteenths. Now the other numbers on here, I was just experimenting with different types of numbers that I was able to buy freely. That's freehand, but that's actually a, a transfer number there. I'll take all of those off, clean that out real well, and looking at uh, this stare at micrometer, you can see how long the taper is on that, that allows them to use short and long graduations and perhaps I should have made it even longer but the job's done and I didn't polish it that's just the the cut and that's good enough this was very well polished somebody spent a lot of time on that more time than they should have considering they never did finish it now really the whole essence of this project and this job this video is to divide this circle into 25 parts like any micrometer thimble and uh, in other words we get we need a line there and you know then a, sh a shorter one and work my way all around all the way around and you know this doesn't really need to be all that accurate it needs to be semi-accurate this needs to be accurate this is just a teaching aid well how am I going to do that well in this video I'm going to use this lathe dividing head simply because that's a recent acquisition of mine and I'm dying to use it but there are so many easier and cheaper and faster ways of doing that and I'm just pointing that out because I know some of you are going to say, well, that's overkill. You're crazy. You're crazy. Well, which may be true. I am crazy like Lindsay. And, of course, the simple way of doing this, and, in fact, I already did, is to take a piece of tape or paper or whatever you want, wrap it around there, and then you've got the circumference. I would cut that off to the right length and then divide it. And I did this already. Divided it into 25 parts. See, the tape is on there. And those could be easily transferred down and anybody in his right mind would do it that way and be done with it and that is accurate enough. All of those lines on the yellow paper could be transferred down and that would give me the location of the 25 lines on the thimble. How did I do that? Well, there are several ways of getting that equal, and we're not going to fiddle with dividers or any craziness like that. But I think you've all seen layout triangles like this. This is a fair gate that allows you to chain, uh, to divide a line, uh, no matter what it is, into a certain number of parts. This one only goes up to 18, but you can get them different ways. I use that time-honored method on with a T-square where you just drop the line. I'm not going to show that because that's kind of eighth grade stuff. You can look it up if you need to, but that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of the video, well, there is no purpose other than to entertain you, but I'm going to use this. Some of you may have watched one or two or all of these videos of mine, and the whole essence of that was to make plates for this dividing head that would allow me to divide a circle into 25 parts and that's why my emphasis was on these plates that had 15 holes for instance there was a plate with only 15 holes because originally when I bought that dividing head it only had one plate and it did not have 
uh, a plate that had the correct uh, number of, uh, of holes in any given circle. So that was the whole emphasis of this, albeit somewhat a waste of time. Most dividing heads are a 40 to 1 ratio. That is, if you turn the crank 40 times, in this case, this end will revolve one time. So that's going to help me divide that circle into 25 parts. Let me show you very briefly the formulas that I use. I do not want to belabor that because it's probably of very little interest to most people, but it is the same way you would set up a dividing head to make a gear or a sprocket or a spline or something like that. Now here it is. So I am indexing with a dividing head with a 40 to 1 ratio and I need 25 division. So with your permission I'm going to write right on this paper and here's the formula if you want to call it that uh, 40 that's this 40 here over n and then uh, n is the number of divisions so it's 25 and if we turn that into an improper fraction, I think that's the term, it's 1 and 15 25ths. Now I could use a dividing head plate that had 25 holes. Do not have one. So I'm going to change this fraction around a little bit, but I'm not changing the value of it. All of these equal one another. So I can change the 1 and 15 uh, 25ths to uh, 1 and 3 fifths. Well, that doesn't do me any good. I'll multiply the top and the bottom times 3 now. 1 and 9 fifteenths. And that's why I want a circle with holes with 15 uh, divisions, 15 holes. So what I will do then is to, for each division, turn this one full circle and nine holes. So I will adjust the spider for nine holes. And I'm already in the inner circle here is the one that has 15 holes. I now have this sector set for nine divisions, nine holes, nine spaces. So if I start right here at the beginning point and go one full turn and then nine holes right to there, that is one division. And then of course I would advance this so that it was ready for the next hole because I'm not going to show that every time on the lathe. Remember that I'm going to put this in the uh, chuck and then this will go in the left hand end of the spindle and this will be tightened until it grips the, it's neural notice, till it grips the inside of the spindle. Let's go set that up. Is this clear as mud? Now for this operation safety first, the first thing I did was to unplug my lathe. It's deader than a doornail. Okay, watch what I'm doing. I'm taking this knurled portion and shoving it into the spindle of this closing lathe. And this will not fit into some of the smaller lathes. And I'm going to take the left hand monkey wrench here and tighten this down until it expands that knurl and tightens up inside the spindle. Alright, that tightened up nicely. You can see how firm that is. Now perhaps you can understand why I unplugged the lathe because should you inadvertently hit that switch or someone else hit it while you're standing there and this came around it would kill you. Now the next thing is I have to make this stationary so that it cannot revolve. That the spindle can revolve but not the actual dividing head. So, And I've done this off camera some time ago. I've got a fitting here that I've drilled and tapped. It's, it's in the, probably not quite in your vision. I'm taking a piece of threaded rod that will be tightened in there and then locked into this piece. So let me do that. 
perhaps you can see now the threaded rod held into this nut here and then I've tightened down this piece there's a thumb screw on that side so this whole thing is quite firm now now this will not fit on every lathe you might have to adapt your lathe that's why this is extra long also I noticed that this master this is master brand came with different fittings for larger lathes one of them is far more robust than this now if I may scan there is the dividing head with the plate facing the operator and then if we sweep the camera a little bit like this right over to the three jaw chuck so you can see that the chuck and the dividing head are perhaps uh, 30 inches apart but a reasonable distance for the operator to make his adjustments and look here a little closer at this thumb screw that tightened down around that threaded rod alright are you able to understand what I'm doing here now so that I will turn the crank each time one full turn and nine holes into that notch then I will do my operation over there by the chuck operation is simply to make a mark and then come over here one full turn and nine holes and so on this may seem pretty primitive to you that's simply a sharper held in an Aloris holder and now I'm going to move it and I have my hands on the dividing head now one full turn and the nine holes and now I'm ready to make the next mark using the compound and this line will be shorter than the previous one and now another one this is a short one also even and it looks like it did silent prayer you know I did change my mind at mids midstream originally I was going to use this but it's most difficult to handle because it's sticky now this it looks great actually doesn't it it's just fine however it will be delicate that is one smear of oil or WD-40 or something and it's wiped away so what I originally was going to do was to scribe little marks on here so that I could use this tape or whatever means I needed to, to put the graduations on but that looks pretty good and that's the way it is going to be because really the purpose of this is not to show you graphic art for crying out loud it was to show you how to divide a circle on the lathe and I did that but I'm not done because we still have to do this and I still have to put the numbers on here now I'm not sure whether this will be number zero or this will be number 20 or, or what until after I get it installed on here and calibrate it I'll use that word calibrate well let's go back to working the, so the thimble is done except for the numbers let's go back to working on this and I do think that uh, those are the right width aren't they that would show up from a distance and it was simply a used magic marker I thought maybe that would dry out on me because I took about 10 minutes to do that and usually you can't let these things set open on the bench you know or you come back and they don't write but that, that did work perfectly in the Alora's tool post 
So now I think you can see that this is so compressed and so small it would be absolutely impossible or if I did use the eighth inch from AutoZone they would run together. They'd almost touch one another and even the one sixteenth would be uh, well I think it would be just fine except it's very hard to handle and get them on there straight and, and, uh, and to deal with in that manner. So I'm going to wipe this clean, and this is the size that I'm using for lettering. It looks pretty good. That was just a sample that I cut out and pasted on there. I have some little scribe lines on here. I don't know if you can see them, just to demark the ends of, uh, so I don't have to figure this out again. I'll take those off. And that center punch mark there is my main line. Now using my favorite pica markers here which have a very fine tip on them I'm just making that center line there's quite a bit of wasted space in there compared to this maybe not but anyway this is as far as the thimble will go so I'm backing it out here and I'm calling that my zero mark and I'm simply going to scribe now using the pica marker in a manner, crude as it may seem, like this. If I can see my original marks. And then a full revolution. and the next mark and it's shorter. Well there's the graduations and there really isn't enough room on here for any more. I really need a, a few more to bring it up to a half inch but that's about it. Oh maybe I can get a few more. It's starting to get kind of rocky there because I'm getting toward the end of the thread. Well now for the numbers and I experimented a great deal with different sizes that I printed out on my printer but these aren't really suitable for pasting on there so I went to Hobby Lobby and this is about four bucks or so and those are quarter inch now I needed some also five sixteenths or three eighths but they just do not sell them and these are the kind that you peel off they're basically a sticker they also sell the rub on which we used to call zipatone or oh there's another name for it too uh, besides zipatone and how these are are going to be fairly delicate but I will apply some of these but I'm not going to show that because no one's interested in that that's kids play but it's gonna be very hard to get them on straight and I need bigger ones here than what I need on the barrel so the quarter inch are perfect here but the quarter inch are going to look minuscule over here Well, that does it. Not very straight. You know, I am a septuagenarian with shaky hands, and that's about as good as I can do. But I think it would be satisfactory, albeit a bit delicate with the peel off letters and the magic marker that is very subject to smearing. This must have been one of my earlier brochures because these sold for over a hundred dollars near the end 
But why am I showing you this picture? First of all, I'm very glad I didn't include my face in that picture or I would have to blot it out. But uh, on these original micrometers, those were decals. Decals that I made with silk screen and they were a peel-off type for the numbers, but the, the little lines that went on the cone tapered portion here were water decals. The correct word, of course, being decalomania. French meaning a craze for transferring images. Well, that was worthless information. I'll take back what I said earlier about the size of the numbers. I believe the ones here on the thimble are sized pretty well, and they are quarter inch. How well you could see that from clear across the room, I don't know, but this will never be used. Remember, Dale Derry gave me this, and his website, his channel, is called Make Something Cool. I'm sure you have all watched him. He's really a great guy. He's funny, too. Well, that's what it looks like. What do you think? But, of course, this is absolutely useless because we don't need to teach the micrometer anymore. We can instantly just hand them one of this, and any moron could read this and figure it out. Now, maybe the pressure on your work would be a little something, but, you know, even a blind guy can see these large letters. You know, so th this type of thing and saturating the market is what put me out of business with Peterson products. And I'm kind of glad it did. I was so sick of making those things. 10,000 I made. Now, don't turn it off yet. I got a little story to tell. In the late 70s, I asked the AV director at the high school, who was a bully, by the way, I said, we need to get a tape player, I, like a beta, it was Betamax then. And uh, he said, no, that's just a fad, you don't need one of those, it costs too much. So out of my own pocket, I bought one, $1,000 it was, and it weighed so much. I always kept it in the box, I'd take it to and from school. But there weren't a lot of tapes available on it yet. Well, why am I telling you that? Because if I had a, a, bought a camera and a friend loaned me a black and white camera, so we so, would sometimes make uh, tapes. But look here. All you had to do was set up a camera and a monitor and, and teach it this way. But that technology was not available when I started making the Peterson products. But look at how nicely that would show up from clear across the room if the boys were looking at a flat screen monitor. So anyway, uh, for a long time, well not real long time, two, three, four years, I was the only one in the school that had a tape player. Other teachers wanted to borrow it, but I was, I was very reluctant because it was so heavy and I paid so much for it. And then of course Beta was a failure anyway. <laughs> A lot of failures, like the doohickey. All right, I'm about done here, but the whole idea here was not to teach you how to make a teaching aid like this, but was to show you how to, to divide a circle on the lathe. Again, that was overkill. I could have used that little piece of yellow paper in one-tenth, one percent of the time that it took me to set that up. And, of course, to make all these plates and everything that I did in a previous video. So. But I wanted to use that machine. I like to learn things myself, and I hope you do, too. Well, this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the project and the techniques that I use. And I'll see you next time. Which one of these inside micrometers could you read from 10 feet away?